Let's start off with your first buy, Bristol-Myers Squibb, down 23% in the past year, but coming off its best month since 2022 as the company looks to quell concerns about expiring patents with two major acquisitions and new treatments in the pipeline. Chris, why are you a buyer here? Well, John, first of all, thanks. It's good to be with you again. Uh, first, let's step back and talk about the MAG-7 real quick. Money has gone in that direction, but they've done us a favor. They've left these other things high and dry, as I like to say. Some of them at record low valuations, record high dividend deals. Getting to Bristol-Myers, less than eight times earnings. It's yielding over 4.5%. It's got $12 billion in cash flow. That's more than 10% of the market cap. This is a classic story we've seen over and over again. The, the negative story is well known. They have drugs that are going off of patent. Their sales will slow for the next several years, so investors look elsewhere. But what investors are overlooking is that they can use that great cash flow to make the acquisitions that you were talking about about, then the earnings growth will start to go up. At the same time, when investors start to see that, they'll bid up the shares, the multiple may grow also. So you'll get a double virtuous tailwind, and you could make 50 or 60 percent on that kind of name without really risking anything higher than a 12 or 13 P. So we like that kind of story. All right. That sounds good. Uh, next, buy up Verizon. It's up around 10 percent in 2024 after posting strong subscriber gains in Q4. Redburn Atlantic bullish on those gains, but warning that it took more than $50 billion in 5G expansion to get there. So, Chris, why buy here? So they're making a good point, but I think they're also looking in the rearview mirror. They're absolutely right. That, that 5G stuff is expensive stuff. But that has already peaked. And so Verizon, again, because of this tech capital grab has sold off with the other slow growing stocks at its bottom a couple of uh, months ago it was selling at less than six times earnings it's done a little better it's now less than eight times earnings six and a half percent yield the average multiple is about 13 or 14 so if you can get back just to the average multiple as cash flow starts to increase because the cap spending is going down, we get paid 6.5% to wait. Again, we're looking at a not heroic guess of a 50 or 60% return over a couple of years as the world returns to normal. No heroics here, John. All right, I see you making that connection. Now for the final buy, Hershey. Pour one out for the chocolate Easter bunnies. Sure. It's down more than 20% in the past year in the face of spiking cocoa prices. Barclays noting that the company is nevertheless gaining back share from Mars after a few months of weakness with significant strength in salty snacks. Chris, you're bullish on Hershey. I'm, I'm bullish on Hershey. And then I said there was no heroics with Verizon and Bristol. You got to have a little heroics here with Hershey, John, because uh, cocoa prices are just going up unbelievably. They make NVIDIA look like a slacker. Cocoa prices are up over 100% this year. And that, of course, is Hershey Chocolate's raw, biggest raw ingredient cost. So in the face of that, that what that's doing is masking terrific execution at Hershey. So they're, they're hitting on all cylinders. They're just facing a hurricane-like headwind of enormous rise in cocoa prices. So if you can imagine cocoa prices moderating and, God forbid, going back down to where they were over the course of a year or two, Hershey's continues to execute. Investors come back. The multiple goes up. And once again, you've got a stock that's been left high and dry that can take off without a lot of huge risk to the downside, I think. Okay, I hear you. But NVIDIA is up 82% year-to-date as well. All right, now for the bail. Boeing down more than 25% in 2024, set to undergo a management shakeup at the end of the year after the MAX 9 door plug blowout was just the latest in a series of quality issues. City, however, maintaining its buy rating, citing robust demand for new aircraft. Chris... You're throwing in the towel here. You're not optimistic. I am, John, and, and I'd like to be optimistic. This is the kind of stock that value investors like, like us would like because, obviously, it's a great market position. The, the aircraft market as a whole is a terrific place to be. It's growing worldwide. But having said that, I still don't think the company has gotten religion. C clearly, there's deep issues of quality and, and safety that they're working on. So they're going to change management. That's great. But they're not going to change till the end of the year. So clearly, this is a show-me stock. But the show won't even start until next year. So I, I, I'm quite
quite disappointed in a stock that I'd like to own, but I think that the, the board of directors here really hasn't uh, done its job in terms of making the changes it needs to make and also telegraphing that, right. that uh, things are different this time.